Hello everyone, it's Kathy and welcome back into my craft room and back on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. As many of you know, I am an independent stamping up demonstrator and I reside here in the beautiful state of North Carolina. I would like to uh, give you an opportunity that if you're not working with a stamping up demonstrator, I would absolutely love to earn your business. If you want a catalog, please email me along with your mailing address and I'll get you out a new catalog. Uh, I'm expecting mine to, to come in most any time. The new catalog does not go live until May 2nd, so if you put your request in now, I'll be sure to get one out to you as soon as mine come in. So, with all that being said, I want to um, I want to go over what I had uh, used in this particular card. This card went up Saturday, and I'm pretty sure that everyone absolutely loved this card. Um, the remarks that I have gotten since then I think I think you did I'm gonna see if I can straighten up my camera just a tiny bit here we go something like that that looks a little bit better um, what I have out here what I want to well, first of all what I wanted to do was tell you that this card was so much fun to make and y'all watched me if you watched the, the Saturday video I have since then put in a piece of starry sky and a piece of white and these were in these measurements for this was in the description or on the PDF tutorial so if you didn't get that you might want to hop over I haven't glued it in yet because I like to put those in and just have them when I get ready to mail the card then I can either write hand write a message or stamp something in and then sign uh, like I want it to be but what I wanted to go over today was the piece of vellum that I used in the background and I'm going to show you today how to make some of those these are some that I made back when I was really on that kick and some of them I even this one was one of my favorites um, I did some with pink there's some that I used some art glitter glue on and then put some gold flecking on it and I'll show you how to do that as well um, but these I think just turned out some are very soft and subtle and some of the other ones are a little more um, more colorful and in-depth this is one that I, um, I actually dry embossed on as well as this one and um, so you know and I cut some butterflies these make absolutely beautiful backgrounds for for die cutting butterflies and things like that okay well, let's lay these over to the side because I have two pieces of our um, stamping up vellum and this is what it looks like when you get a pack it's eight and a half by eleven and I think you get 20 sheets of it in a pack and 20 sheets go a long way you wouldn't think but it really does so we're going to get our paper trimmer out and I'm going to cut these down and I'm just I'm going to go ahead and cut I'll tell you what let's cut them individually I'm going to lay it in on the 11 inch side and I'm going to cut this in half at five and a half that would be directly in half so close my bar down and I'm going to slice up then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut both of these at four and a quarter so four and a quarter about four and a quarter this gives us four pieces from each sheet so you can see that a pack would get you a lot of different um, pieces what's so nice about these is they make great focal points on the card like I used on the one that I did um, I'm going to do the same thing over and I'm going to show you it makes no difference whether you cut it at four and a half on the eight and a half inch side or if you cut it on the 11 inch side you're still going to get the same pieces regardless of how you do it now you'll turn this and cut it at five and a half you're just doing it in the opposite way so that plays in quite a bit if when you're making cards whether you want them to be top open cards or side open cards so I'm just showing you that you can do it either way and get the same result so there are our eight pieces now of vellum because we got four pieces from each sheet so now we can go ahead and start with our um, our blending what you're going to need to do this is a piece of vellum you may want to bring in depending on your mat um, a piece of card um, chipboard now these came out of my paper pumpkin so if you get paper pumpkin these pieces work beautifully if not you know use what you got you may want to anchor it down by using some um, 
tape. I'm going to pull those two off. I was using those for something else. Uh, you can anchor this down by just taping it. And I'm going to get just the bare little bit on here. Just like that. Turn it and give it a tear. And you could do the same thing across the top. And tear. And the same thing here. And tear it. And then here. And tear. Okay, so that puts our piece down on there. Now, I haven't tried it on my glass mat. I know it works really good doing it on the, um, the, the uh, chipboard. What else you're going to need is some um, isopropyl alcohol. The 91% works better, but if you have 70, you can try it. I usually use this. I have both because I use this in my uh, Equate wipes and I make my own alcohol wipes with these uh, sensitive, sensitive fragrance and dye free wipes. They're hypoallergenic. You get 72 in here. I open this up and just open the hole and fill it up with the 70% isopropyl um, alcohol. That I use these for everything. Y'all know that. They make the best wipes and cleaning for your tools or what have you. I'm going to set that one down because we don't need that one. You're also going to need a little cup to put your alcohol in. And what I suggest doing is just pour a tiny bit. You don't need a lot. Just a little. And you're going to need like a little paintbrush. And you're going to need some alcohol um, stamp and blend markers. And for any of you that don't know, your uh, stamp and blends are alcohol based markers. So I'm going to pull out my Knight of Navy. Let's do a dark Lost Lagoon. Um, let's do how about a Blackberry Bliss and I'm going to do a dark pecan pie. This is a new color. And what about, I don't have the berry burst yet. I have it on order. Let's do a dark sweet sorbet. And how about a dark misty moonlight? Let's try those and see what we come up with. So, I'm going to start out with my dark night of navy. You always want to start out with dark colors. Um, they work much better. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scribble color. Just scribble it on. It doesn't have to be artistic. It doesn't have to be anything pretty. Just scribble some color on. There's that pecan pie. I'm going to come in with a little bit of the Blackberry Bliss. I have got a little bit of Moody Mauve. And then let's do some Dark Lost Lagoon. And you can see it really is no rhyme or reason how you put your colors down. I'm going to come back with the dark um, night of navy. Put a little bit right here. A little bit more of the blackberry bliss. Oops, I've used the wrong end. You want to use your brush tip with these. You can just get down a lot better color by using that end. Um, some sweet sorbet, and this is the dark sweet sorbet. Ah, my 
top did not want to come off of that one. I'm just going to put a little bit right there. And then I'm going to come back in with some of that Lost Lagoon. And we're going to end it on that right there. And now we're going to come in and we're just going to wet our brush and drop some drops of the color of the alcohol on top of this and just let the alcohol do the work you can see how it's starting to move it and you really just want to let the alcohol do the work for you you start getting those pools of color that's so pretty it will look like it's going to really wash it out but it, it really doesn't. It just moves the color and gives you this beautiful um, look of the bokeh. Um, and if you've seen the little circles of the bokeh being done, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I am going to grab a paper towel because I did spill a little alcohol right there. Um, and then we're just going to let that dry. Now, if you want to, by all means, take your heat tool. You don't have to, you could just let it sit and dry. But I'm gonna put it on low, and I'm just gonna bring it up and just move my colors a little bit. Any of the colors that look like they're pooling, you can just kind of move them in the direction you want them. And see how pretty it moves the color? And then once you feel like that you've got it set pretty much like you want it, then you can turn it up and really heat it. Okay, that's all I'm going to do with that one. And you can even see here, look how it looks like that's gold right there. It's, I'm sure it's still wet just a little bit, but that's okay. This is going to be gorgeous. So the other thing that we can do, remember I told you about the, let me show you those in the catalog. I can show you the old catalog. I just can't show you the new one. Um, in the old catalog, okay, it is over where your accessories are at, embellishments, and it is the Gilded Leafing. And it comes in a jar. Now, I took mine out of the jar, and it looks like this. See, 12 is right here. And let me show you what it looks like in actuality. Um, it is beautiful. It can be difficult to use, and that's why some people seem to refrain from it. But I took a small box like this and put mine in it, and that's what it looks like. And you do not want to have a heat tool next to it because it's little flecks of gold paper if you might say um, it does work beautifully I'm going to set it over here you don't want your fan on or anything like that when you're using it I'm going to feel that everything feels really good I'm, I'm going to take some glue I'm just going to take some glue now and I'm going to squeeze out just some glue all across this piece both, both directions just like that and then we are going to take some of our flecking and we're just going to lay some of it across here just stick it down just let it stick where it will and wherever it doesn't is okay Bring some up here and stick it down just like that and you can see it can be quite messy to work with but it's okay um, you know sometimes crafting can be a little messy and this is almost like a mixed media type um, deal and what you want to do is just kind of rub it 
and let it stick where it will. And wherever it doesn't, it's okay. I'm gonna bring it, it, it definitely sticks to your fingers. I'm gonna bring my box back over and I'm gonna tap it in. Just like that. Now if you want to put a little bit more on there, by all means you can feel free. I've got I've got gold flecking going everywhere. This is what I said. If you're not a fan of a messy type um, crafting stuff, this is probably not for you. But I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a little line of glue there and there and there. You can use a different type of adhesive. You can use um, um, two side, the uh, tear and tape. You can use um, the seal. You can use whatever you like. But just remember that it is going to stick to whatever you put down on it. What you put it down on, I guess I should say. And this is a great way to use this product. And a lot of people don't even know it's there. It's like one of those little hidden gems. And so I'm going to bring my box back and I'm just going to kind of slide this back into it as best I can. And I'm going to tap off again. And you don't have to put the gold flecking on it if you don't want it. But if you want to add some gold shimmer to your piece, this is what I suggest to do. And I think it works beautifully. So I'm going to use my little sweep brush and I'm going to sweep as much of this back in <laughs> as I can. Just like that. I'm going to lay our piece over out of my way for a moment. And I'm going to just sweep back into my box I'm going to take one of my alcohol wipes and I'm going to wipe my hands off as well as my brush I'll just slip that over to the side for right now and let's bring our piece back over and now we can go ahead and take our tape up off of it and reveal exactly what we have. And there is a beautiful piece. Now you can cut this down. I do want to just kind of roll this a little bit more, get a little bit more of that flecking. Just make sure everything is on there the way we wanted it. And there is our piece. Now we can bring this to our trimmer and trim it down. But you see how beautiful those colors are? Even without the gold flecking, this would be an awesome piece to use and it's so simple to make these and have them ready for your cards just like I did the one that I did earlier. So trim these off. That one needs to be trimmed just a tiny bit more. And like I said, if you're not a fan of the of making a mess, then I would suggest not be careful with your blade because you don't want to cut yourself on your blade. this way and I'm going to bring it down to three and three fourths that way I know that I'm cutting off all of the excess and I'm going to bring it here to five and give it a slice and there we go there is our beautiful piece that's ready to go onto a card base so let's pull a card base out. And here is a top opening card. Now this, we could easily mat something over this or under it. So let's take a piece of a 
about balmy blue? How would it look on balmy blue? See, it changes whatever color you put under it. White really brings out the colors more. And the more muted colors that you pull in, let's try a let's try a piece of look at that. See how the colors change it drastically from the white to this. I think I really like it on the white. So for this one, you know what? We're just going to make it a simple card. And I'm going to put this down on a piece of white cardstock. So let's... That's not big enough. Let's take a white piece of cardstock. And we did cut that to um, three and three quarters. So we're going to do this at four by... Let's cut this at four inches by five and a quarter. Just like that. And on the back of this, we're going to lay this down. I'm going to use a little bit of stamp and seal. like that, a little bit right there and there. Let's turn it over and see if we're seeing it under there. Just a tiny bit, but you know what? We're gonna carry on. We just need a little bit here and here and here, and we've got it up here. So let's bring this piece over a little bit better yep isn't that gorgeous so I'll always matte it in whatever color ac accentuates it the best and I really think that this one is, is accentuated so much better on this white than any other color then you can always come back with any color card base and put it down again all right, we're back, and I went ahead and cut um, a new piece because the piece that I had had some score lines in it. It was something that I had tried that didn't work, but I threw it in my scrap bin, so it wasn't really a card base. And I went ahead and, and cut a piece of the Lost Lagoon. I think I really am loving the Lost Lagoon, and this is the Sweet Sorbet, Crushed Curry, and Night of Navy. Um, a lot of times if you will pull a subtle color and use it, it will really accentuate the color, the least color in your thing. I think I could have probably done Bubble Bath as well. Um, so Saffron, I think any of those colors would have worked, but I think I'm gonna go with that Lost Lagoon. That is one of our um, new colors, or it was an old, it was a returning color, I believe. But um, I like the way that looks. So let's go ahead and turn this over. I think for this, I'm gonna glue. I'm gonna use re regular glue. And I'm going to just go ahead and put some glue on the back of this. And I'm going to turn this to the side like this and see if I can get that centered over top of that pretty Lost Lagoon. So pretty. Look at that. So I think all we're going to need on this is maybe a sentiment and we can let this card go as it is or we could cut, we could die cut another piece like we did. Why don't we do this? This is a thought. Why don't we take this piece and let's run it through our cut and boss, um, our stamp and cut and boss machine. And I'm going to put those in the trash because I've still got gold flecking going everywhere. Um, I'm going to put the gold flecking over here for right this minute. And we, I want to do some more of the alcohol blending uh, with some of these. I just think this is so pretty and it's such a, a neat way to make a beautiful card. And y'all saw how quick and easy it was. So it's something that I think you can throw together in a heartbeat 
and have something very pretty to show from it. So I'm going to grab that scrap of Lost Lagoon because I want to cut a sentiment, a piece for a sentiment, and I think I'm going to grab the stylish shape dies for that. But I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. I think I'm going to grab the square dies and I think I want the next to the largest and the one before that. And I think I want to cut these out of this. I'm going to actually make a couple of frames, but before I do that, I want to make sure I'm getting these taped together so that my frame will be as close to perfect as, as I can possibly get it. So I'm going to tape that down like right there and right here. And we're going to run this through our die cut machine. So let's lay our card over here. And I'm just going to pull up my little one because I think we can do this with the small one. And let's grab the plates. One back. I think I'm going to take these up and angle them like this. Whenever you angle your plates and they're not going against uh, the flat edge, they cut so much easier, and I'll show you what I mean. Normally, when you put this in, you would have a huge crack and pop if you were going against the edge. But when you do it this way, look how easy that goes through. And barely any pop. Barely any crack or pop at all. Oh, we're going to do that again, so I'm going to leave my machine right there. And look at that cute little frame. That's what I wanted because I want to build a couple of frames on the front of this. I, I don't know. I just think that would be cute. And we still have this little piece that cut out. We're going to save that. So let's try. I think I'm going to have to come right there. We'll cut this one off and then we can still put this through at an angle. So grab my scissors. That off just like that. Then I'm going to tape that down and then I can run that through <clears throat> with that angle still going in first. So let's bring our machine back here, put this back, and put the cover plate over. And that's done. That's going to give us two of our little centers and another frame. And then what I want to do is I want to put these something like that. And then maybe even like this. Isn't that pretty? That is so pretty. And we can put a sentiment right across the middle. I was actually thinking of doing them like this. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put these together before um, we do anything else. So I'm going to bring my silicone craft sheet out. And I'm going to lay these down. Silicone craft sheet is great because you can see through it. So if you lay it on your grid like this you can actually see. All right, I'm going to hold that in place and I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue right about here. Just that tiny little bit's all I need. And then what I want to do is lay this. I need to come down. I didn't quite get it where I needed it. It's okay. That's why we're using the silicone craft sheet. So right about there. So now I can go under it Put my glue down.
love that. Isn't that cute? So I'm going to bring that over to the back. I just want to make sure that this frame is nice and adhered together. So I'm going to put a little extra glue under there and just press it. And now that that's together, I'm going to use some mini dimensionals. I think my mini And let's cut this in half. That one right there. And let's put one right here. I'm just trying to get those on the corners and the edges of each one of these. So I need two more. So we'll cut one more in half just like that and right here and then I'm just going to pull these little backers off and the ones I can get off <laughs> We definitely want them all off so we can adhere this. I'm actually going to pick it up because I think I'll stand a better chance of peeling them. I'm pressing that into the cardstock just to make sure it's adhered. That one's sticky. Okay, like that. And now we can bring our card over. I'm going to put that like up in that corner. Do I want to put it right in the center? I think right in the center. Just like that. And now at the bottom, I want to cut a banner. And we're going to go back to those stylish shaped dies. And for this one, I think I'm going to choose this banner right here. And I think it'll be cute because it will match. We could do it across the middle, but we're going to lose the, our square that we did. That's so pretty. So I don't want to. I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to put my banner right here. And let's see what we're gonna what we're gonna put in it. Let's decide what we're gonna stamp first. Then we can better decide what banner we need to use. That's always a rule of thumb. I have a tendency to always try to find my banner first, and then try to find a sentiment that a sentiment that fits in it. And that's not always the best thing to do. So I'm gonna go to my timeless arrangements. You are so kind. I like that. I really appreciate you. Let's see what big that one is. Um, okay, we can go smaller than that. Perfect. That one will be perfect. So that's the one we're going to use, and I'm going to grab these and put those back in here. A lot of times I will leave them with the with the um, adhesive on them, and I do that for a reason, because more than likely I will need to cut another frame, and I've already got it together that way. So that's always a good rule of thumb. So let's pull over. I think I'm going to stamp this in black. I think I really like the sentiments to be bold. So I'm going to cut this about I'm going to do it about an inch and a quarter. I think an inch and a quarter will give me exactly what I need.
And now we can go ahead and cut this piece. Or do we want to stamp first? I think we're going to stamp on it first. We are going to stamp it first, and that way we will be able to get that around it exactly where we want it. So stamp walk and pick it up. Photopolymer, so I am going to bring out my stamp and pierce mat. And let's grab our grab my black ink over here. And I'm going to stamp right about here. Let's get that nice and straight. Ah, that messed up. That's okay. We have the other end for that reason. That's much better. So now we can put this piece over it exactly where we want it. Just a little bit. Uh, I had done quite a bit of that um, earlier, and it's kind of gotten all askew again. So I'm going to need to try to do a little bit of maintenance in here, maybe this afternoon. All right, that's going to go in. And there is our little banner, and that's so cute. And look how cute that's going to look on there. I really appreciate you. Let's see what it would look like if we did it. It wouldn't be bad right there. It doesn't really take away from our windows. Hmm. Now it gives me um, something to have to think about. <laughs> I do like it there. Um, I think I'm gonna go with it there. I like that, and I don't. I, it doesn't seem like it covers up the whole card this way. So I'm gonna put it right about here. That gives me a great place to put it down with. I'm gonna use um, my mini uh, Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to put one right there. I'll do one right there in the center. And then another one. And the reason I'm doing the small ones is because I want it to rest on these pieces right here. So I'm going to pull these backers off. And then I want to set it so that this is sitting right across here, just like that. Isn't that a beautiful card? I really love the way it turned out. I love that gold flecking in the background. I love the muted color of the Lost Lagoon. And I really think it's great the way it picked up a little tidbit of the Lost Lagoon throughout the card. So I, I hope y'all enjoyed that. And I'm going to be revisiting some more. I tell you what, I want to try one other thing before we go. I hope you don't mind. This one I probably won't make a card with it. But I wanted to try this technique. And it was, again, it's working with the vellum. I'm not going to put, I might just put my board under it. I'm not going to tape it down this time. But I'm, I'm laying it on my board like this. And I want to put in maybe, let's grab some different shades of blue. I'm going to get a dark starry sky and a dark boho blue, a dark Tahitian tide, 
and what about a dark balmy blue look at all these beautiful blues and these are all dark each one of them are dark so we're going to start out let's start out with our darkest which would be starry sky then night of navy then boho blue yep boho blue tahitian tide and then balmy blue we're going to try something and i don't know if it's going to work but we're going to give it a school try what i want to do is i want to just swirl some color like that starry sky is this night of navy yep dark night of navy boho blue Tahitian Todd and Balmy Blue. I think that my Balmy Blue is just about out on that end. We'll swirl a little bit more right there. Okay, now we're going to grab our alcohol. Get our markers out of our way. And again, I'm going to just drop Actually use my brush and just touch this a little bit and now I want to kind of let my colors kind of move up and out I just wanted to kind of see what it would look like if we did a stripe of color up the middle of our um, our card. So let's see. I'm going to move my color a little bit with my heat tool. Put a little bit more ink down and i think i'm going to go in with that middle color the boho blue that's night of navy this must be the boho blue yeah and i want to put a little bit more color right in here and maybe a little bit more of the Balmy blue. And then we're going to drop some more alcohol on it.
I'm going to lift this up and let the color run. Let it run back into itself. Okay, we're going to try heating it one more time. Not heating it, but just drying it because that helps move that ink as well. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so much prettier. So that's what you need to do. Anytime you're dealing with uh, the vellum and the, and the alcohol, add color until you're satisfied with your piece. And even after you finish it, if you want to go back and add more color, you most certainly can. If you saw like a piece up here, maybe you wanted a little more of the starry sky, which has more of a purple tone to it, you can very easily just come back in, put some up there, maybe a little bit right here. And all you've got to do is just drip a little bit of alcohol. And let it run. You definitely want to let it do its own thing by just letting it run in whatever direction that you lean your paper. And if you want to help it a little bit by just touching it with the, the brush, you most certainly can do that. And look how beautiful that's becoming. So this by itself right here could definitely be um, your work of art. And see, the more you move it, the more different it becomes. I love it. So let's go ahead and hit it again with the number one on our heat tool. And that color move again. And the alcohol dries so quickly. That's what the beauty of this is. It just really dries super fast and so beautiful. And so just like that, we have another piece done. And I was really just wanting to play with using all the same tone of ink, like all blues. And I do like the way this turned out. I'm not too sure that I would um, do anything else to this. I don't think it needs any gold flecking or anything like that. I think it would be fine um, with this like it is. So I'm going to let this one dry. I'm going to probably put it with my other stacks of... Um, the ones that I have done previously, uh, they, they're just so pretty. I mean, you know, everyone takes on a, a, a life of its own. There's never ever two that are the same. Look at that. I mean, the same, almost the same colors, but the amount of ink that you put down, the amount of alcohol, 
all of that plays into this. And isn't this one just as pretty as the ones we have here? And this one's ready to go into my stack. So I hope that you would love to try this technique. Give it, give it a whirl. I mean, everybody has rubbing alcohol. You can purchase the vellum. Now, I can't guarantee other vellum how it works. I can tell you I have tried some other brands of vellum that did not hold up like the Stamping Up. The Stamping Up vellum has a different texture to it than any vellum that I've used in the past and I love it for that reason. I think this is gorgeous. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today along with our little card that we made. Um, let me know in the comments what you think and again like I said this is a refresher because I had done these a while back but I think what we did today turned out absolutely beautiful and like I said let me know if um, this is something that you would like to make and I'm gonna have all the products listed um, over on my PDF tutorial so if you're interested in picking up any of these you can actually click the link on my um, tutorial it will take you to my online store and on my tutorial also has all the numbers of everything that I used so God bless and keep you thank you so much for being here today and as I always say in closing let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in heaven he is so worthy so until we craft again God bless and keep you bye bye